What's up, lads? You're with Budget Monk, and I know it's been a long time. It's been uh, another 79 years, and it sure has been dense. So a lot has happened. In fact, too much has happened. That's actually what I struggle with. Uh, I wanted to say uh, I'm going to show off the current state of the game a little bit here, and this one's basically just for the boys, for those of you who um, care what I'm currently up to, because I'm really hyped and excited about this this game. But uh, with that being said, I'm not going to be doing a series of updates. Uh, I'm sorry to inform you guys. Uh, what I do plan to do is after basically every stream I've been, uh, as I muse over the game and strategize, I've been sort of recording some thoughts and some comments and um, some of what uh, actually took place. And I plan to uh, combine that with footage from my stream itself to make a series once we have achieved our final victory. So it's basically, I suppose it's going to be retroactive. And uh, I hope that that's sufficient for you guys because I don't want to be doing this after every stream or every couple streams or so. Uh, it, it's uh, not enjoyable for me to do and it takes too much time. But I think if I do ultimately achieve that, um, yeah, then I'd be more interested in actually doing something like this. I don't want to do something like this and be met with failure again. Uh, if you guys can understand that. Um, so instead, I'd like to spend the time that I, ha I feel motivated to make YouTube videos to be on some sort of more s relevant videos. So, with that being said, this is our game, guys. I I'm absolutely over the moon and thrilled. We ended up losing Lithuania. And I'm just slowly, by vital interest in his land, I'm slowly generating claims am among my subjects. And just uh, nom 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 feeding him around, which obviously doesn't give us overextension, so I can do that simultaneously. Uh, we have revoked, as you can see, uh, essentially all of Europe apart from Roman territory, uh, with exception of the British Isles up here, Lithuania, and then obviously this stuff is technically Europe as well, and uh, the big Russian boy. Now, I wish I could report that we are his dynasty, but we are, we're actually not. So I did actually get unlucky uh, where I basically kept putting my prestige into kicking ears. Uh, as soon as we passed this guy here, we we're with always eternally the, uh, the emperor. And, um, you know, all it takes is to get two heirs back to back and you're in the negative and then my ruler died when I couldn't uh, kick my third heir. That's sort of what happened. But thankfully, we have been working with really good stats. Now, the reality is, guys, that uh, in 115 months, the prestige from conversions is going away. And which is what really generates our prestige. And yeah, I, I would really hope like because we've been in this situation quite a few times and you know they are a general and we're really hoping to switch to russian dynasty now because it is going to start getting later and uh, the reality is it might start getting too late really considering we will not have prestige to make that up possible but uh we've set up russia really nicely as you can see in terms of trust if i whack this two more times at 80 percent at 80 favors He's actually, excuse me, at 20 favors, he's actually over 80 trust, and therefore he would never be able to rival us. So Russia is in a situation, and that is relevant, by the way. Russia is an absolute juggernaut, and he's actually working on quantity as we speak, which is crazy. Uh, but um, they cannot rival you at 80 plus trust, and we start building that up. Uh, switch dynasty, break our relations, maintain raw marriage, claim is thrown, PU him in one foul swoop when uh, he shows signs of weakness, having a low legitimacy or even just no error at all, very likely to occur at some stage. Um, this is the Spanish colonial empire, but Russia is entirely composed of that development, and he's actually about to eclipse Ming, so he's essentially the biggest prize possession of all nations, and uh, yeah, we're hoping to PU that. Other, in other news, we flipped Copter, guys. I'm absolutely stoked. You know, my strategy I made a video the other day was uh, successful. And uh, we have we are now Coptic, and we've now enforced Coptic on essentially all of the Holy Roman Empire. And uh, funnily enough, actually, even though it says Catholic is the dominant faith, 
it seems like with religious peace that uh, if the rebels enforce on you uh, the emperor's faith is the dominant faith and not Catholic, even though it says Catholic here, uh, which is fantastic because the eight heretics are the ones that we have not enforced on. Uh, but I will say, thanks to the Mantua bonus down the bottom of 0 0.1, which is increased by 75%, we were actually maintaining 50 imperial authority well, every single member of the empire was uh, heretical. Uh, it's just something to think about that uh, Mantua, pretty, pretty nice. So I, I did think at one stage that we would have to basically sit here with heretics and, until we uh, unified the empire. But uh, no, it's the best case scenario where we're currently, I've converted 100% of my own land. Uh, I think I only just recently called this, so all of a sudden they're available. Um... 100% of my own land that can be done. Uh, also, we just spawned global trade, and I'm going to remove these guys from the trade, um, whatever it's called, a trading company, which I used just to generate merchant, just to pull into Genoa, just to spawn global trade. And the main reason I wanted that is for reform progress, which I'll talk about in a second. But uh, with the exception of these modifiers here, where, you know, sadly I've recently converted to Protestantism and reformed. We've converted our entire country, and I'm already moving on to my subjects. Now, speaking of subjects, look at all the missionary strengths, uh, uh, missionaries, excuse me. We've even had more than that at some stage. It's probably because nations like Unspark or Baden have essentially converted their entire country by now. Uh, but yeah, really, really able to close that gap pretty rapidly here. It hasn't been only a few short years, and uh, Coptic is slowly but surely kind of enveloping all of um, Catholicism. So in regards to the new world, this is basically the price that we pay for being Coptic, is that anything that is not controlled by my subjects, which is England and Portugal, which right now is actually four colonial regions and then a fifth with France, are, uh, they are not going to be Coptic. So I'm actually going to begin the annexation of England and Portugal shortly, and then inherit his colonies, and then enforce on them. And even though we have to one-tag and take over this land... I would like to be able to put the missionaries in there when they've got nothing else to do in the meantime, right? Uh, and enforce on them so that the, the new colonies are also Coptic as well. That helps with the one faith. Uh, eventually, we'll probably try to do the same thing by full annexing France and Spain and inheriting their colonies, but uh, that's probably a long ways off as they are spread throughout the entire world. And although we just reached here... Uh, we don't exactly have impeccable coring range ourselves at the moment. So the Age of Absolutism coming up, which I'm looking forward to, and despite losing 10 crownland by falling to the rebel demands, we're on 35 and I can currently seize, which I'm going to do as soon as we, uh, the next stream begins. That puts us at 40. Uh, this is going to be over 20. means that as soon as we hit the parliament, which... Uh, is just reliant on the uh, loyalty here. Hmm, I should think about whether I do want to just postpone seizing. Uh, regardless, we combine those two. So at least uh, well over 50 um, to get the Age of Absolutism off on the right foot where you get um, you know bonuses here, building it up. Not bad, could be better, but certainly not bad. Um, clergy and burgers in just about the ideal situation nobility is going to evaporate so i could just uh, remove that if i wanted to uh, but just about ideal here and reform progress ideal as well we're going to go parliament uh autonomy because it gives you more force limit guys more force limit so we need to push for the military hegemon and uh political absolutism prior to the age of absolutism we're already there at 900 900 is the the money to go from tier 5, tier 6, tier 7. Uh, we are able to days vault Catholics now, guys. Uh, we just got finished days vaulting Spain and France before him, uh, using the war school cost against other religions and feeding, you know, in this case, uh, Aragon and England, res respectively, as well as 100% overextending. Uh, slowly but surely cracking down on the entirety of Italy. Milan slowly making his way into the country. And I'm going to uh, incorporate Florence as well. We're going to start that up. And Deus Vault, the Pope, uh, we're taking over Rome. And that will actually allow us to form Italy. But the plan, believe it or not, in terms of tags, guys, is actually supposed to be Austria, Croatia, Sardinia, Piedmont, and Italy. 
we may be able to squeeze something else in, like England. If England doesn't exist, we could freely form that uh, just for some nice bonuses. But those are the relevant nations. And um, being Coptic, guys, if we look at the Coptic tab, which I, I really like, by the way. It's been a long time since I played Coptic. We've um, got the 10% manpower, 1.5 missionary strength, 10 CCR, that's beautiful, 2.5 discipline, and the fifth bonus is 0 0.5 legitimacy. Now, this is nice to have during the age of absolutism where legitimacy is relevant, but obviously not that great. So we've got all the four, which are all really important, and the fifth holy city, which needs to be owned by a Coptic nation and be Coptic religion, is right here, which, uh, yeah, within a few Mamluk wars should be uh, alleviated also one of them is under ethiopia right now which is just something to consider that he could actually lose this also um but that's fine uh very unique to my run right now guys because i'm used to being hussite and in a very similar situation there were essentially no coptics right there's like only a couple coptics in the game but due to my empire here guys we have tier 5 defender how cool is that giving us the whopping 20% manpower in true faith provinces absolutely remarkable so one thing i'm used to uh, as doing this as bohemia and therefore hussite has been the hussite bonus of a flat 20% manpower well with the manpower recovery here of 10% uh, and the flat 20% in true faith provinces as we convert provinces this might even be a, a nicer manpower position to be in so very, very nice. But also the monthly war exhaustion. Uh, you can actually get the monthly war exhaustion cost reduction here, or the reduction over time, at rank 2. But then it actually goes away when you get to rank 3, which is really awkward. Uh, we've got that on lock here at uh, rank 5 defender. Really nice, because we spend all our time at war, basically. And uh, otherwise, we're, we have done an administrative, and we're going to be doing influence next. Uh, really looking forward to getting the Parliament's ability to gain annexation cost reduction and cultural conversions. Uh, despite our game being absolutely gigantuan, despite us being so strong, for the first time we're really pulling ahead in manpower. We're ramping up. I'm super far ahead in mill. I can actually slacken if I want and then do more generals for more professionalism and more manpower and more armies. We're starting to really snowball. Same with the economy. We have spammed governing capacity buildings in our own territory almost to maximum capacity, as you can see, which is brilliant. Uh, economy doing great as the um, revoked empire. And more to look forward to, right? Like all of the English trade power when we incorporate them. Uh, I'm absolutely over the moon with this game. And at the moment, it's actually in a better position that I, I thought we could be in. Uh... But the ultimate variable is the culture, guys. And uh, it's going to be the Piedmontese culture, which flips to Rome in this game. Uh, regrettably, this looks almost identical in color. But this is, in fact, Tuscan, guys. So these three will not have separatism when I incorporate Tuscany, which is next on the chopping block. Uh, and I have begun these two. So we could kind of count them to being uh, Piedmontese already. But you can see how small the culture is. Uh, not great. So, uh, it is daunting, and, and we do not have the Houseite culture conversion, but I am about to get the parliamentary culture conversion cost reduction, is what I was about to say, which is a nice bonus. Uh, so my protocol, basically, guys, is to focus my Diplo. We're going to be going for a rank 5 uh, advisor, focusing my Diplo, and just brute forcing it. Uh, at the moment, this is not my primary culture, so I can only do adjacency. And I've actually converted every province that I can. So my attitude is just to keep converting every province that I can. We can fall behind and deploy if I need to. And I'm just going to brute force it, brute force it. Because we actually feel like we have an abundance. Of, that is with a good ruler though. Uh, an abundance of admin more than we need. Uh, because not only do we have this CCR, but we have the adaptability 25. That puts us at 35, which is better than what we're used to. And we have 45 CCR here being the emperor so 20 more than what we usually have at this stage of the game and i already feel it it's good it's good it means that these cores finish sooner putting more pressure on me to do the next war and win the next war and expand sooner but also it you know doesn't cost as much which uh, is great so with this admin efficiency the age of absolutism 
and uh, some admin efficiency from uh, Piedmontese and the cold flips that we're, uh, we have upcoming. And then finally, we will actually be unlocking the 25 CCR from Italian Ideas, guys, putting us at a stunning uh, 70, 70 CCR, I believe, uh, which is astronomical. So my, uh, what I'm hoping we will see is that I can just gobble up the whole world at an unprecedented rate and basically achieve an earlier world conquest in my other runs uh, due to having such extreme CCR and being, you know, quite frankly, just a stronger game. That's what I'm hoping, despite the fact that we are going to have uh, less admin efficiency. That's what I'm hoping. And if that is the case, that will just give us more time in the late game to just sit and culture convert when I actually do have the uh enlightenment reduction and the culture conversion cap reduction uh, you can use the golden era 10 percent point cost reduction for example uh in the late game whereas in my other run i was still uh diplo annexing nations and so on so that's where we're at guys absolutely hype and fun for me you know i've done similar runs like this actually for years now the majority of my time being spent on runs like this and this is the most sort of crazy and unique and different one of them all. And doing it as an OPM is uh, extremely enjoyable. And I just really, really hope that we can go to the, the distance. So like I said, guys, I, I will give you the uh, odd sporadic update so you guys know, you know, how things are going. Uh, but I'm hoping to be successful and I'm going to be doing some more detailed content in regards to this uh, campaign. Uh, retroactively i hope that uh, you guys are understanding and uh, that that sounds like a good idea i hope so and uh, that you enjoy that as well as this video thank you very much for watching and i'll tell you what guys if you want the update you'll have to come watch me live right so <laughs> let me show for myself it, it has been going pretty well over on my live stream and i've been uh, very happy of late so i appreciate you guys very much and thank you very much for watching guys i'll see you live i'll see you in the next video